What's up everyone, it's uh, Caddy with Money Vesting. So in this video, I wanted to talk about one particular ETF or one sector of the market, which has been quoted as overbought and overpriced. And this is where investors in particular, one technical analyst is also seeing a bubble, which is ripe for popping. In other words, there is going to be an opportunity to short in this particular sector. So let me know if uh, you enjoy this video and no, it's not energy. We've talked about energy before, before you make any guesses, it's not energy. Um, but as always, if you guys enjoy this video, find it helpful, make sure that you drop a like, don't forget to subscribe to the channel. And of course, a link to our Discord and Patreon is gonna be down below. There is a 16% discount that is available if you want to join our private Discord community, get access to all the day trade alerts, swing trading ideas, buy and sell alerts, investing alerts, and of course, our private videos and are all the benefits as well. So the sector that we are talking about today, and this comes from Theo Trade's chief market technician, Professor Jeff Bierman. Uh, he sees a bubble ahead for consumer staples, which he calls a quote, safe haven rotation sector that is overbought and overpriced. He also doesn't hold back on any of the warnings. He says, and I quote, we're heading into a recession and consumer staples are priced like growth stocks when they're actually value stocks and the Marubzo signals, which is something that he does use. It's a, it's a way to analyze these Japanese candles, uh, says that we are in for a much deeper correction in consumer staples that we've experienced in the past couple of days. And the group of stocks that he's talking about include in the report, he says Walmart, Procter and Gamble, Nestle, Coca-Cola, Campbell soup and PepsiCo. Zeroing in on a couple, he points out to how Campbell's Soup trades at a price earnings ratio of 20 times, yet the return on assets, a proxy for growth rate, is at just 7.5 times. So we've talked about this particular sector in a lot of detail in one of our other videos, specifically in the ones where I talked about that this is absolutely comical, where a lot of the companies that I just mentioned, like Walmart, Coca-Cola, even Pepsi and Costco, for example, are trading at a much higher price earnings multiple than the likes of growth stocks like Microsoft, Apple, Tesla, uh, Meta, Google, some of those companies, right? So there is a pretty significant discrepancy there. And he also mentioned that this stock could be cut in half and it's still too expensive. And he's talking about, um, you know, Campbell's Soup. And he also goes on saying that that's the same thing for Coca-Cola, which is trading at 24 times earnings with a return on assets of just 10. Every sector of the S&P 500 needs to come to single digit multiple before it signals a market bottom, semiconductors, oil, retail, but consumer uh, staples, not even close. He also mentions that he's looking at one major signal for signs of this bubble bursting, and that is the biggest Marubazo uh, in the consumer staples sector, XLP, which we've seen since back in September. So what is that Marubuzo? Um, and again, I'm a little bit off on that pronunciation, but it's pretty much this word right here. Bierman explains that the that that's via the candlestick charts, which are used by technical traders and monitor the open and close of the stock on a single day. Uh, Marubuzo, from the Japanese word closed cropped, is a long bodied candlestick that has no shadows, regarded as a strong signal of conviction of buyers and sellers, depending on whether it's pointed up or down. This right here is the chart right now. Um, and what you'll notice that I have the same exact monthly chart for XLP on my trading view as well. And if you go back to back in September of 2022, we haven't really seen anything that is something of a Marubzo. And the reason is because we still have a little bit of a longer wake or a bit of a shadow on that candlestick as well. We haven't really seen any candle that does suggest uh, simply a body that's entirely up or down. But of course, we are consolidating sideways a lot. RSI, he's suggesting, is potentially going to come down. And so is the MACD, where we did see a MACD crossing below that signal line as well. So that right there is the MACD crossing below that signal line. RSI also expected to hit even lower lows. And I'll go over the technicals here in just a minute. But before we do that, this is this entire sort of technical analysis from them. And reading further, he also says, and I quote, the greatest opportunity to short on Wall Street, according to risk reward, is consumer staples. That is a pretty bold statement to make. And this is the beginning of the breakdown in consumer staples for the long term, he also added. 
And he's also been, uh, you know, recognized in the technical analysis community. He has nailed three big moves for the S&P 500 in 2022. In December 21, he forecasted a possible 20% drop to 3,900 for the S&P 500 within six months. And it hit 3930 in early May. Last June, he forecasted a rally and recovery to 4300. It hit 4315. And back in August 25th, Berman uh, predicted a retest of around 3600 for the index, which closed out last September at new 2022 lows of 3585. So he's been on point with three of the most important moves for 2022 uh, in S&P 500. And right now he is quoting this as the greatest opportunity to short on Wall Street, according to risk reward, and that is going to be consumer staples. So we definitely have to pay attention to this sector. We have to see how it moves. XLP, in my opinion, of course, there's going to be some opportunity because we've talked about the valuation itself. And if you take a look at the consumer defensive right now, which is going to be consumer staples, in other words, consumer defenses, if you take a look at the P ratio right now, trading at over 24.27 collectively, which is the second highest, third highest right now among all sectors, right? Of course, we've got technology trading at 26. We got healthcare trading at 24.6. And then we've got consumer defenses. This sector should never be at this level. It is insane how high this sector is trading at. And then if you take a look at the peg ratio, this is even crazy. Peg ratio, which is price to earnings divided by growth, it pretty much takes into account the earnings growth for that sector. And right now, the lower this number is, the better it is, right? The lower this number is, the more undervalued this sector is. And the peg ratio for consumer defensive, consumer staples, 3.35. That is insane. That's the highest among all 11 sectors in the S&P 500. The highest. Meaning that on a growth adjusted basis, consumer staples is by far the most overvalued. And and, and pretty much, uh, you know, just the most, uh, there, there's the most discrepancy in consumer staples uh, price earnings multiple with respect to its growth. Sectors that are trading at lower peg ratios mean that their growth rates are much higher, but they're trading at a much lower P multiple. But for consumer defensives and consumer staples, we're trading at 3.35. That simply means despite the lower earnings growth, they're trading at much higher P multiples. And if you come over to some of the individual stocks and sectors as well, this right here, the top right is going to be consumer defensives and consumer staples. Coca-Cola, 23.6 times earnings, whereas Google, 19 times earnings. Apple, Heck, even Apple's trading at under 21. Microsoft's at 21.5. It's even weird that Visa, a company like Visa is trading at 23.4 and you got Coca-Cola trading at 23.6. Walmart, 21 and a half. Pepsi, 23.3. Costco at over 30. You know, like it, it's it's insane. It's, it's crazy how high the valuations are for these companies that earnings-wise, have pretty much consolidated sideways. They're stable earnings. I'll give them that. People still drink Coca-Cola. It's a big brand and revenues are stable, but earnings growth little to nothing. And yet the earnings multiples are so high. So going over to the technicals right now, uh, there is some lower highs forming. So we have seen a little bit of underperformance right in the month of December, down 2.7%. In January so far, we are seeing underperformance from staples, right? So if you come over to this chart right here, and if I reload this, uh, you'll notice that staples is actually one of the sectors that is underperforming in 2023. So if I come over to this chart over here, and uh, let's just go over to year to date, uh, what you'll notice is Ethereum and Bitcoin are charging higher up over 36%. And the one that's actually down a lot is going to be XLP. XLP is down over 2.2%. That's the only S&P 500 sector that's underperforming, right? Of course, we got the dollar index, so you can see that in yellow. DXY, we got the US 10-year yield, we've got the volatility. Those are two, three separate things, right? That's the dollar index, volatility, and the yields. But then the first S&P 500 sector is XLP, down over 2.22%. So we are seeing a significant amount of underperformance and I think it's only a matter of time before it sees more downside and comes down to potentially $65. That's going to be that next support level all the way down to low 60s. Uh, in other words, $59, $60, that's going to be that next technical support. And that represents at least a 17 and a half, close to 18% potential downside for this particular sector. Also, I do think energy has a little bit of downside uh, considering that it's still trading pretty much at all time highs. But once the earnings start to come in, once they start rolling in, I think it'll be very, very apparent, very clear that energy also 
needs to come down because the comparables are going to be very, very difficult to beat. And uh, in my opinion, there's going to be potential opportunity short the energy sector as well. Let me know your thoughts on this. Let me know what you think, but I will definitely be paying attention to staples and we'll formulate a strategy for our members. Uh, in other words, we will come up with some ideas on how to play this over the coming few months in 2023, because I also do think there is opportunity because valuations certainly don't make sense for a lot of these companies trading at such high levels. As always, if you enjoyed this video, found it helpful, make sure that you drop a like. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel. The link to our Discord and Patreon is going to be down below. As always, happy investing, and I will see you all in the next video.